Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and I'm gonna talk about the top five best dry goods for long-term food storage prepping. And this is a big deal because all of the foods you see right here on the table will last up to 25 years when stored properly. And of course, they're also very affordable, which makes them a great option for anybody who's prepping on a budget. Now you can actually store all of these foods the exact same way to achieve that shelf life, and I'll give you a short tutorial of that at the end of this video. So I do wanna say Midway USA is the biggest supporter of the channel, and thanks to them I can get out here and put out information like this to help those who wanna get prepared become better prepared. So a big thanks to Midway USA. Now, let's move into the different foods we have right here. I'll give you some pros and cons and let you decide what's gonna work best for you, but any of these options are gonna be very good for your long-term storage when it comes to food. So. The very first one on the list is pound for pound, dollar for dollar, the best value you can definitely get your hands on, and it's just a staple in the preparedness community. And that's gonna be white rice. Long grain white rice is impossible to beat when it comes to how much it costs for how many calories it provides and the level of nutrition it has as well. It stores extremely well, and it actually is, well, just very calorie dense. So. White rice is one of the best dry goods you can possibly buy for long-term prepping scenarios. Now, some of the negatives is that it can be a little difficult to cook if you're not experienced with it, so make sure you practice before an emergency, and you have to make sure you get white rice. You don't wanna get brown rice because that'll actually spoil much faster, so that's why you have to stick with white rice over brown rice. Now, another thing you might wanna consider is when storing white rice. It has been known to have insects or eggs of insects inside of the grains or on the grains themselves. And that's just part of the deal when it comes to production. So a lot of people suggest that you freeze your white rice for a few days before storing it. So that's something you might have to do as an additional step. But other than that, when it comes to your dollar for dollar calorie to density ratio, it's impossible to beat white rice. It lasts forever, and as long as you store it properly, you won't have to worry about it ever again. So, number two on this list, the second best dry good for long-term prepping scenarios where you're worried about not having access to food again at some point in the future is gonna be dried pinto beans. Now, this actually goes hand in hand with the white rice. The beans are high in protein, they're high in fiber, which are both things that the rice isn't as high in, and they make a balanced meal once combined with the rice. So if you're gonna store rice away for the long term, you might as well pick up some pinto beans as well. And like I said, stored properly, which we'll show you here later on in the video, they'll both last at least 25 years, which is impossible to beat, and they're both affordable. So that's why, Beans and rice are a staple of the preparedness community. It's very hard to beat. If you're only gonna buy one, I'd probably go with the rice just because of what you get for your money. But if you're going to store rice, I definitely recommend getting some beans as well. So the third dry good on this list is going to be rolled oats. Now, rolled oats in particular are really versatile when it comes to long-term food storage. They're rich in vitamins, which you don't get with some of these other dried goods. They also still have fat in them, which doesn't hurt their ability to be preserved. Whereas usually fat is your main contender when it comes to long-term storage, oats provide a little bit of fat, which is very important during an emergency situation. Another thing about oats that I really like is that you don't actually have to cook them to eat them. Yes, it is better to, but it's not a requirement. Whereas with these beans and rice, you would need to cook them. So oats are really versatile in that degree. You can also soak oats overnight in order to make them more edible without having to worry about using any fuel or having any heat source. So I like that a lot as well. Only downfall of oats, at least in my opinion, is that they're not very dense, so it's hard to store a lot of oats in the same amount of space that you could store white rice, for example. So oats, highly looked over. You wanna make sure if you get rolled oats for storage that they don't have any flavoring or any additional additives in the sense of fruits or anything else like that. You wanna make sure they're just plain rolled oats, nothing else to it. We don't wanna put anything else in the mix that could cause early spoilage, okay? Now, the fourth dry good on the list for the best dry goods for long-term food storage is potato flakes. Now, potato flakes have a few things that I like about them, 
And a couple things that I don't, but this is just something that you have to be aware of. They're still excellent and they still will last forever when stored properly, okay? They're really easy to cook. That is something I like about them a lot. So even though you don't have to cook the oats, the potatoes are extremely easy to cook even though you do have to cook them. Another thing that's nice about potatoes is that they're filling. And so this will provide a very, let's just say, pleasurable meal experience. In a long-term emergency where food is scarce, it's nice to fill your belly, and potatoes do a great job of that. Now, that makes a great morale booster. It's something that you would definitely want to keep in mind when it comes to, I don't know, keeping team members fed or your family fed or members of your community fed, whatever it might be, but it can definitely help take the edge off. So one of the things you have to consider with potato flakes is that you can't get the kind that have flavorings just like with the rolled oats. Some of these will have you know, butter and garlic and herbs and things like that to make the taste a little bit better, but unfortunately those ingredients will spoil faster and make this product not last as long. So if you're storing this for long-term purposes, you have to get plain old mashed potato flakes. You can't have any of the flavorings added. And that's probably the biggest downfall of potato flakes is that you need flavor or else they're not gonna have much flavor. And you know what, in a long-term emergency, you might not care that much, but just be aware of the fact that even these right here on the front say, add milk and butter. Well, if you don't have milk and butter, they're gonna be a little bland, but trust me, they're still edible and you can still eat them if you don't have those ingredients. Now you can add things like bouillon to the potatoes to add some flavor, which is always a good way to go. You should have salt stored up in case, you know, you need it for a million other reasons for why we need salt. If you don't have any salt, then, uh, I'll put a video up over here so you can check that video out because you need more salt. But another way around it, just throwing it out there in case it's something you're interested in, is getting some non-fat dry milk because this can actually store for a very long time as well in a very similar fashion to everything you see here on the table. It is a lot more expensive though and it's hard to get a ton of it when it comes to how much it's gonna cost. But if you're worried about being able to make your potatoes a little creamier and a little bit more tasty, you can always have some of this on hand in tandem with the potato flakes, and then you're pretty much good to go. So that would be the only downfall of the potato flakes in my opinion, but otherwise they store very well. And just like the oats, they're not quite as dense as the rice, so you don't get as much in your space for what it provides calorically. But regardless, it's still a very good option. So, what's the fifth best dry good for long-term food storage? That's gonna be something everybody in North America seems to like, pasta, okay? Now, pasta has a few things going for it. It's affordable, it's really high in carbohydrates. In fact, it has more carbohydrates than rice, than any of the other options you see around the table, which is probably why people like it so much in North America which means it provides a lot of energy, which is good during an emergency. Maybe not so good when you're hanging out in a sedentary situation in an office, right? So other than carbohydrates, it also has a lot of protein and fiber, which you don't get in every single one of these items. So it is pretty well balanced when it comes to what it provides on its own. And of course, people like it a lot. So it's just a good thing to have on hand. Now, one thing about pasta, that might be a con, is that it's questionable whether or not it really lasts quite as long as some of these other items. Some people will argue that it's 10 years, others will say it's 25 years, no problem. It just depends, but you have to make sure that you're storing it properly and you'll probably still get very close to what everything else here can provide time-wise. So pasta is a great option. Another thing to consider, angel hair pasta cooks faster because has less surface area, so it's easier to cook, but it is a little bit harder to store because it's a little sharp and people do run into issues with it piercing mylar bags, which is what we're gonna use to store any of these items for the long term. So you can always substitute things like elbow macaroni or shells, which are a little bit more rounded and have less of a likelihood of piercing your mylar bag. But at the same time, they'll take longer to cook and not be as efficient. So. This was just a brief overview of the top five dry goods for long-term food prepping. Now, there's a lot more details you could go into with each one of these items. There's a lot more pros and cons you could go over, but in general, if you're worried about just having food on hand for an emergency, any of these will do the job. You could store away as many of these as you want, 
You could go with just beans if you really wanted, which would probably be the one I would recommend the least if you're going to go with only one. But either way, having food on hand is more important than not having anything at all. And these are affordable options that you can go get at your grocery store right now and you can store them away for a very long time and not have to worry about whether or not you're gonna have food in a long-term emergency situation. So let me know in the comments below if you have any other suggestions or advice. There's some other great dry goods out there that store very well as well. Things like quinoa, right? But you can also talk about other things like honey, which lasts forever and is very good for you and has a lot of antibiotic properties and things that are good for your health. So there's a lot of things that you can do when it comes to long-term food storage. But in my opinion, these are the top five dry goods because they're kind of no-brainers. They don't take a lot of thought, they're easy to store, and they're things that people like to eat in general. So let's get started on the tutorial. Okay, so for this tutorial, we're gonna do it on a micro scale. In order to get this food to last for the long term, we don't need many things. We need a Mylar bag, we need an oxygen absorber, at least one that's the proportionate size for the bag itself, and the food. And of course, you need a way to seal the bag, and this bag actually has a Ziploc on it, but you can also use something like a hair iron to get it further sealed, or if it doesn't have a Ziploc, you will need to seal it with an iron of some kind. So, this is very simple, but we're just gonna go ahead and pour the food into the bag. And like I said, this is on a micro scale, it's a small Mylar bag, but I didn't wanna have to do anything major here because you all probably know a lot of this already, but this might help answer some questions for those of you who aren't fully aware out there. Okay, let's see if we can get a whole pound of pasta in there. Nope, it's not looking like it. So, go ahead, pour some of that back in. You do need space in the bag. You can't fill it so high that you can't seal it. So keep that in mind, okay? This looks like it's gonna seal pretty well. I'm gonna throw the oxygen absorber in there. We're gonna try to get some of the extra air out of the bag as best we can, and the oxygen absorber will do the rest for us, okay? And once we have some compression there, we're gonna seal it up. And there we go. Now, of course, you could go back and use the iron to really fully seal this again, which is generally what I would do, and then I would label it. But that's all you have to do. That's how easy it is to get this food to last up to 25 years. It's really not a huge process. Now, the next thing I would do is just throw this in a bucket. And here's a macro example of what that looks like. We have the pasta stored in here in Mylar, labeled. We have the date on there as well. And you can see it's in a five gallon bucket. So. That's how easy this is to get this stuff stored away for the long term. Hopefully this tutorial helped you. Hopefully the information in the video helped you as well. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything else at all you need from me. And besides that, that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.